have just entered the Bear Crawling Nation. This is Armored and Mon. Welcome to the other side of live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the other side of live. I am your host, R. Mordant Mon, and my co-host, let's make that official, my co-host Charles is with us as well. Charles, say hi to the people. Power to the people. Power, you say power to the power people. To there the you people. go. That's right, my brother. <laughs> last, well, you know, two weeks ago, our last show, we had a guest star's Boca Musica, and that was a very entertaining show for me. It's the first time I had uh, six people on my one camera, myself included, so five people I was interviewing, and we all had to squish in on that couch. And actually, if you want to see the video, that is available here at stickcam.com slash mortarworld. You can just look for the one that, that has me and, and a ton of people on it. And it was, although they are, are Renaissance act and, and very body music, which they did play three songs, uh, it was a whole lot of fun. And we got to see people chasing and catching their dreams, although they, uh, albeit somewhat unorthodox, because those count, my friends. If it's your dream, it counts. And as long as you're not hurt, hurting but helping, as long as you're bringing smiles to faces, then, my friends, that does indeed count. So there you go. I want to say hi to the side panel. My ADD brain is sliding all over the place. Now, I was going to say hi to the movie guy, but he just disappeared. So hello <laughs> to Kay Westerfeld, Velt, and hello, hello, Kelly. And they're waiting. That's good enough. So, oh, I want to give a special shout out. We have some mm -hmm. listeners from China have been showing up on my podcast mm -hmm. download as well as the Bear Crawling Nations podcast download so hello to all of our friends in China who are listening to this podcast thank you for joining in welcome and I hope that you're enjoying what we are dishing out welcome detached Lotus you are now in the number one spot in the side panel she looks thrilled she looks thrilled <laughs> maybe she has a <laughs> yeah, there's the wave thank you hey acknowledgement yay now, I sent you, speaking of chasing and catching your dreams, I sent you an email of a short bit of audio today that I discovered after we had spoken. Yeah. Did you get that in a bit? Were you able to listen to it? I did get it, and I did listen to it. And and uh, hang on, caller. You're actually behind somebody else. I may have to cut you off. First of all, get rid of your, uh, we can hear your speakers. So get rid of those. Are you having a laugh? There we go. Got rid of them. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. It was nice. Did you Did you want to play that at the end of everything? Or uh, it's up to you. I thought we could play it somewhere. Maybe even play it here at the beginning, and then well, where, where there's all this dead air, that'd be great. Maybe I'd have to. I'll have to. I'll look it up. How about that? I'll get it. I'll pull it back out. You can tell me when you want to play it. Well, that's great. Let's do that. And if if I tend to forget, then please, please, please. Uh, remind me because that was a nice little piece of stuff and I actually listened to a couple of his other things and he's a fun guy cool now I do apologize I'm pulling it up now so I apologize if it starts automatically playing I'm going to try to catch it before it does that well if it starts automatically playing well maybe I'll just shut up and we'll listen yeah. to that alright I got it it's caught it's ready to go when you are for those of you who are not sure about what tonight's theme is, uh, or of course, as always, you can call in with whatever, whatever questions you have about what, you know, whatever you got. And if we can, we'll wing it. We'll make something up or actually give you a straight answer. But tonight's theme is how bad do you want it? And of course, we're talking about those dreams you're chasing and catching, those goals. That thing that you keep saying you want, that special it that, that, you're, that you're always saying, no, I want to be that. That's what I want to be when I grow up. So, how bad do you want it? But, if you want to call in, 813-413-7133. The first person I want to talk to, if you are still on the line, is 480. Are you still there? I don't show anybody still there. I don't, I don't see anybody either. So, anybody who wants to call in again, 813-413-7133. We are now ready for those calls. And it would be fantastic to, to chat with you. In the meantime, before we launch into everything, Charles, how has your two weeks been? It's been up and down. I think, you know, I've talked a couple times, and we realized today that uh, 
we can no longer talk to each other in between shows because we do shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's you know I'm not to go into details too much because it's not something I want to put out there, but. There were some major life decisions made, and then the universe went, "Uh uh-uh. And you helped me. You and I talked about it, and we kind of, together, just you were my sounding board and advice man and and, uh, figured out, well, you know, let's look look to the next thing. And and I think something you brought up even in mentioning that was uh, uh, how bad you want it, and we talked about those things. And it's been an an interesting two weeks, not like show-wise, not something I can get on here and talk about, but... My life has been, uh, I'd say, more up than down. Right. Right. Now, explain to everybody why we can't talk in between these shows anymore. Hi, caller. Hang on just a second, and we'll be happy to get I'm you. I'm hanging. Go ahead, no, go ahead and do your caller, and then... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Answer that question no, first, because no, no, no. I'll forget it, and that's not fair. Why uh, can't we talk in between shows anymore? Because we end up <laughs> doing shows. You'll, you'll say something. And it's, we used to talk. We used to be like, hey, how's the Tortuga life? How's business? How's the kids? And but lately we've been getting more in depth really really fast. I think it's because we do the shows every two weeks, to the point that it's like crap. This should be on your show, especially this afternoon. Yeah. We're just getting warmed up, touching base about doing the show tonight, and we started doing the show you wanted to do here. Right, right. basically <laughs> getting it in depth with a with a conversation topic uh, of everything. And it's like we should be recording every time we talk. Only the bad thing is that if we do that, then you know all our deepest darkest secrets are out there for everybody. <laughs> and yes, we want to be you know completely transparent for you. Yes, we want to share, but maybe not to that level yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm transparent about everything. It's just there's some things that people would not understand correctly in the wrong context. Right, right. And, you know, although I don't do it here on the show, I do tend to curse a bit. I'm a cursor. <laughs> no, <you laughs> That might shock some people. So no, let's get to the caller. 647. Where are you calling from, 647? Um, well, my cell phone is Ottawa, but I'm actually at the Edmonton Fringe Festival right now. This is Allison Williams with Ariel Angels calling in to the uh, How Hard Do You Want It show. <laughs> or, no, How Bad Do You Want It? How Hard Do You Want It? Yeah, <laughs> How bad do you want it? How hard do you want it? It's a completely different show, though we may, you know, we may look at that as well. Uh, yeah, and the sound well, you hear in the Allison. background is actually, um, I'm part of a large group show that's happening right now, and a group show is um, when all the street performers band together and everybody does five minutes, and we're doing it today, actually, because uh, on the first day of the festival, a guy uh, who's a fellow street performer broke his ankle in six places and uh, has no health care, so we're doing a group show to raise money for him, and uh, that's the noise that you hear in the background and the occasional cheering and framing. Now, have you done your bit already? Have you have you and your troop done? No, everything? we are the finale. So, given so that they're on the first moment, act right now, and there's eight of us, we're yeah, we're, you we're pretty dragged good. away. <laughs> At any moment, I could dash to go up in the air. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think, and, and I'm, one of the things that, uh, that I'm thinking about here, and Ricky, you and I have talked about this, sorry, Morton, you and I have talked about this a little bit, um, is uh, the amount of work that actually goes into so-called glamorous jobs that is not necessarily visible to the naked eye. And I think a lot of people have dream jobs that, that they do not necessarily understand how much work goes into that dream job. Right, right, absolutely. In fact, Ron, uh, my other... Tortuga buddy Scaramouche, he does kind of a on the there's a Rennie group that he does a a like a column for you know you ask him a question he'll answer it and one of the things that he covered was you know somebody was trying to break into the Renaissance Festival circuit and he covered how much yes it's great being a stage performer however all the work you know what they don't see is all the work that's gone into it all the rehearsal time all the painful you know shows that we just sucked at that we had to endure. Well, there's a saying that your first 300 shows are going to suck. Yeah. yeah you know, you're just going to get that first 300 shows out of the way. Tortuga Twins have the season of suck. Every time we bring in a brand new show, right, a brand new show, there is a season of suck where where it's like, oh, we don't want to perform this anymore. It's painful. We're losing money, and we have to eat on the during the week, and we'll always haggle back and forth. Should we get rid of this one? Uh, uh, but then it, it works out. It's probably just a timing thing or whatnot. But, you know, they can talk to me about this all day. What have you got for us? 
<laughs> well, what I've got is I'm here at the Edmonton Fringe Festival, and I am pretty much living my dream job. I'm a professional street and festival performer. Um, I'm a professional trapeze artist. I dreamed all my life of being a circus girl, and here I am being a circus girl. And every day here at the Fringe, I do two shows. I walk around and talk to my fellow performers. I walk down the street and have people walk up to me and say, wow, I loved your show. It was so great. And every day after my show, people fill my bucket with money. And I love that. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm also, as I hang out here with friends of mine who are closer than some of my other festival friends, I'm really struck by how many of us do not have a particularly solid personal life. Um, my show partner, uh, whose name is M.A., who performs under the stage name Mimi, Mimi, one of the reasons that we're here is because Mimi's boyfriend is also performing here, and this is one of the few opportunities they get to see each other. They're engaged to be married. They're going to get married in September, and uh, they're both going to work like the week after their wedding because you've got to take the work when it comes. And I think that's one of the things that people don't necessarily realize as they're pursuing their dream job is they have to take a look at their priorities in terms of family life and in terms of personal life and decide what they care about the most. And it's not a right decision or a wrong decision, but it does take, you know, 80 or 90 hours a week to build a new business, which is time you are not spending dating or looking at your children or going on a fun vacation or surfing the Internet. Right. Or, yeah, playing on Facebook or watching TV or playing video games, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk even talks about if you think that you're going to have a nice, you know, three hours a day, or not a day, three hours a week, and the rest of the time you get to play your games or relax, and that's and that's what you how you're going to create your business. You have another thing coming. That's not the way it works, especially if you want to be successful. Otherwise, it's just yeah. a hobby. And if you're spending yeah. more time on your video games, your TV, or whatever else, that's your hobby, you know. And the other thing that you're doing is just something that you're kind of dabbling into. So yeah, I fully agree, and and I think. I think, too, I was, I was chatting with somebody um, at the hotel I'm staying at the other night, and he was saying that he had just read Tim Ferriss' The 4-Hour Work Week, and he was really hyped. He was like, you know, I'm only going to work four hours a week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy and sell real estate, and I'm only going to work four hours a week. And I said, well, do you love real estate? He said, well, no, but, you know, that's, that's what everybody says you should do to, to get rich and everything. And he and I had a long talk about how, you know, number one, it's not going to really do you much good if you don't love it enough to really pour your heart and soul in it. And number two... The four-hour work week is a total misnomer. What Tim Ferriss means, if you read his book, is there are four hours of his week that feel like work to him, and the other 60 to 70 hours is stuff he likes doing, even though it is furthering his business. Right, right, absolutely. And I have read his book, and I agree. And he talks about you know, working towards retirement, and it's like you don't want to retire. You don't want to stop. You want to get to a yeah. point where your business is perpetuating itself so that instead you get to do what you want to do, you know, whether that is another exactly. kind of business or whatnot. You don't want to retire exactly. to, to you know, fish in day in and day out. You know, I watched my dad deteriorate as, as he went from a, a pretty important man with a, a lot of people underneath him while we were overseas to Florida where all he was taking care of was a ranch and, you know, sp spending time with the animals and going out and fishing. And after a while... You know, uh, beer became his friend, and then vodka became his friend. So, yeah. you, you know, it, you want to keep growing in, in whatever you're doing, I, even if you're walking away from the workforce. You know, you want to find something that is your passion so that you can continue to grow, so that you can remain yeah. green. Otherwise, you're just going to grow old. And, and I think and, the, the last thing I want to leave with you with on that is both at the time that you're having to give a lot of stuff up and it starts to become painful to like not have a girlfriend or not have a child or not have a personal life and also as you move towards retirement and you're starting to wonder you know what's out there I think this is where having a clear sense of your mission really kicks in um, because you know my mission is to entertain people regardless of their ability to pay and when I do that on the street and I see the happy faces that compensates for a lot because it's something that I've strongly identified as a thing I want in my life and it helps me really Yes, I am being fulfilled. I am being fed. That are maybe not in the ways that you know owning 2.5 cars and a house in the suburbs and 2.5 kids would feed me, but that takes that place. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So has it been worth That's it for all you? I got. <laughs> yeah, so far it's working. I mean, and I have to say, there's days when it's really freaking lonely. And, and I have to say, you know, don't end, underestimate the amount of loneliness there is on that path to being amazingly successful. You know, there's, there's a fair amount of lonely along the way, and you have to be willing to tough it out. And I think loneliness is one of the things that separates the got there from the didn't quite get there. 
Right, right. Now, what's next for you? What's uh, next on your horizon for uh, towards bigger, better, better, more? Uh, the next thing on my horizon is to continue working towards event management so that I can continue to have more people working for me, spreading the word farther mm -hmm. and wider, and uh, getting my book in gear so that I can also keep my writing career going. Good for you. Good for you. Now, where can people find you, or where do you want people to find you? Uh, well, for right now, you can check me out at angelsintheair.com. Angelsintheair.com. You can see what she does, what she's been spending most of her time training to do. She also has a, she's a quite the prolific writer uh, as far as doing student plays, et cetera, et cetera, that are very successful and, and uh, making a nice little chunk of change doing that. So Allison has her fingers into a bunch of different things. But angelsintheair.com, if you want to see what she is about, and there you go. I now, think it sounds thanks, like Gordon, you always great to talk with you. Well, Thank you, Allison. Question. Love you. Mean it. I have a quick question. Love you for too. Her. Bye bye. All right. Oh, what was your quick question for? Her? I wanted her to leave her Bluetooth on when she went in the air. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that, how cool would that be, right? You know, Bluetooth Allison in the air. <laughs> oh, you hear the ah, <laughs> the wind going through it and everything. Yeah, it wouldn't. So be. once again. We have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of people on the side panel. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody in the chatterbox. Thank you for tuning in to the other side of live. If you would like to call in with a question about our topic or a question just in general, or just to say hi, those those, those calls will be shorter. Eight one three four one three seven one three three. Give us a call. In the meantime, I guess it's just you and I, Charles, talking about what we're talking about. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I'm talking about how bad do you want it? And, you know, this is something that's been smacking me in the face lately, and I know it's been hitting you as well. You know, it's, it's how much time are you spending on moving towards that goal that you really, really want to do? Uh, Malcolm Gladwell in The Outliers talks about that 10,000 hours. It talks about that study that was done with uh, Berlin Music. So oh, I really should know this stuff, and I just don't off the top of my head. Anyways, they followed people around who played the violin, and they wanted to see what was the difference between the people who would become hugely successful to people who were moderately successful and the people who were just going to go on to become teachers. And the only difference was the amount of time they put in, and the ones who became the best of the best was 10,000 hours. So are you ready to spend 10,000 hours on this thing that you're like, oh, I want to be a writer. I want to be an author. I want to be an actor. Oh, I want to learn to play the guitar or whatever it is. I want to be an astrophysicist or like my friend, uh, my Rennie friend, Kara Beasley, who is a brain surgeon. Little Kara Beasley, brain surgeon, just got engaged. Of course, she's, you know, uh, I have to tell her sometime that she's famous on the Internet because I keep mentioning her. You know, she'd spend her time doing that. I'm spending my time as a, as a Tortuga twin. I put in, uh, I don't know if it's 10,000 hours, quite likely. It may be since 1987 and our inception. And now I'm reinventing myself with Mordant World. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm diving in with my 10,000 hours here. Of course, there, is, there are times where, where, you know, hey, I'm getting a lot of work done and everything's groovy and I'm feeling like, yeah, I'm really accomplishing stuff. And then there's those weeks, the couple of weeks, like the last couple of weeks where I was just not feeling it. You know, I went through the blahs and we talked about that and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not spending my, I haven't been spending my 10,000 hours. And this has been the major thing that I've been working on, you know, doing this show uh, because there is that accountability to, to do this every two weeks. So when we talked about that, we talked about, you know, things that are getting in the way. And, and if I really want to press on to the next level, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to start um, setting some things aside. But not the Diet Dr. Pepper yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you and I had a talk. I think this is a good point to get into that. Today you and I are talking All right, let's about do it. things. and. I think the way we work together on the show and the way we work together, period, is although we see a lot of things the same way, and I know, speaking for myself, I depend on you to show me a different viewpoint a lot of times when I, I come at you with something, either privately or on the show. And the reason I do that is, well, I know you'll, you'll give me an aspect of life that I wasn't thinking about, or you'll help me clear my head, or you'll at least challenge, you'll at least challenge the thoughts that I have so that... I can either defend it or get rid of it. Right. And today you and I are talking about things, and, and 
you keep you've been harping on yourself a lot lately about this this public speaker thing. Like, man, I, I really want to be a public speaker, and I'll have to. I got to write this speech. I got to write, and it seems like that's coming up a lot in our conversations. That you're you're hard on yourself. So I started coming at you with a different point of view. So well, it's all about timing. Sometimes, even though we really 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 want to do something. I mean, I really want to go to all the conferences that are out there for podcasting and for for media and all that. And I know it's different than writing a 20 minute speech, but a lot of times, even if we think we want it, obviously somewhere deep inside we don't because we're not pushing ourselves forward. I mean, when I want to go get ice cream, I want to put you on hold and go get ice cream, you know. Yeah. But I want to be here more than ice cream. So I sit here and you see what I'm saying? So I said to you, I, I was giving you these these counterpoints if you will well look at it this way look at it that way and you said do you remember what you said to me that i yelled at you for no uh, uh not exactly and he you, says the, getting off screen <laughs> 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 yeah you know you know we were talking about doing the speeches and, and comparing uh comparing myself to other people uh who are really really out there really really successful and i said ah you know what do they want to hear from me i'm just a tortuga twin and i stopped you <laughs> I you nailed you. my butt. I said, "What? What'd you just say?" And you repeated like, it. You didn't even catch. It. You said, "I'm just a tortuga," and that's why I started. Ye- literally, I started yelling. I was like, "Don't!" Well, I won't use the words I used there, but like, "Don't bring yeah, that yeah. to my house." I'm just you basically. I'm you just. threw my teaching right back at me. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, he's right, you bastard." I'm just. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of thought oh. is that? I'm just. Woo! Wait, we have a caller. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, 803. Thank you. Saved by the bell. <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? It's me, Country Boy. Hey, Country Boy, first of all, turn down your speakers. Well, if he's really in the country, Thanks. unhook the tin can from the string. Yeah, Daddy. <laughs> Thank God he's a Country Boy. Welcome, Country Boy. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing pretty good today. Um, I had something to add on to earlier about, you know, improving your life, improving yourself, always striving to go further, not staying in one space. Yeah. yeah. Um, I see many people doing it every day. I do it myself. I'm trying to do it. But the one thing that is a constant that I hardly do see is those same people giving themselves time to have fun, keeping that inner child in them. Because you can't push yourself your whole life without at least giving yourself time to play. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's why, you know, I like I like to think of people chasing and catching their dreams, you know, setting the goals and all that kind of stuff. Make a game out of it. It should be fun. You know, yes, it's going to challenge you. Yes, it's going to push you. But it should be fun. You're doing it because it feels good. That's why we do most everything. It feels good. Even if it's, you know, oh, I'm sacrificing to help my children because it feels good to do that. You know, so uh, on every level. So you absolutely, you know, having a good time and, and, and enjoying your life. This is it. This is your life. Enjoy it. Oh, yeah. And it's a real good thing to always keep that inner child with you because if all you do 24-7 is work and strive to make yourself better, you're actually losing parts of yourself every single time you do it. You know, you're not keeping the enjoyment out of it, the happiness. You're not keeping who you really are. You're so, just acting like you're trying to change everything. What have you been doing lately to keep yourself uh, in that game, enjoying that enjoying that time, enjoying your life? What is What has been the thing that's been doing it for you lately? Well, here lately, I mean, one of the main things I love to do is work on cars. I mean, I've been doing it as, you know, striving to get myself going and make, do, make sure I do myself better. But here lately, I've got, when I was young, I think I was 12, 13 years old, I used to play with toy cars all the time, little remote control cars and everything. And here lately, I've been getting back into the RC, the engine-powered cars, you know, doing yeah. something. Fun. And I do that almost every other day when I can. I'll take mine out and I'll go play. You know, to give myself 30 minutes to an hour of fun time or more. Yeah, my brother used to do those. My brother did did that. Played with the cars. He's you know he's been a shooter. He's gotten into uh, bow hunting. 
you know, motors, he's, he loves, you know, he's, all these tinkering things as well and fishing. Dear God, the man loves to fish. Everybody should love to fish. It's fun. Sit back, always drink a couple of beers and catch fish. You know who really loves to fish? And it's odd if you know him, especially uh, Dead Bob, uh, our good friend Muggsy, who's got this long blonde hair and he's uh, he does rapping, uh, you know, as under the name of Milk Money. He's now getting into stand-up comedy. Loves to fish. And it's like, really? You? He's like, yeah, man, I'm all about it. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, who'd have thunk? Can't judge a book. It could be something, you know, I mean, for anybody that you could possibly know that you think you know them 24-7, it could have been something that they did with their kid, with their father. Right, you know, absolutely. That's something that, brings back, that brings you back memories. Yeah, and Country Boy, there is a country song out, and I don't know who sings it, that is called, and she just thinks we're fishing. And it talks about a dad bringing his daughter out on a fishing trip, and they're talking about different things. Really young girl talking about stuff, and you know, you know, putting the bobber on, and all this stuff. And he's just talking about how his it's making a memory for both of them, and she just thinks they're fishing. Yeah, I that's, remember. I've I've heard that song several times, and I, that's one of my favorite songs. Danny's dimples just says Trace Adkins, so I don't know. I don't remember it. The, 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 I remember the voice is deep enough. It might be Trace Adkins, so yeah, there you it go. is Trace Adkins. It is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Well, well thank you, my get, friend. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Nope, not for now. All right. Well, thank you for calling in. Always a pleasure, and thank you for tuning in to the other side of live. Thank you very much. Once again, those the rest of you who are out there, if you want to call in 813-413-7133, or you can Skype call us at Darth.Mordant. That's right, Darth as in Darth Vader, dot Mordant. If I could change the name, I would, but I did that before I started putting together the Mordant World stuff. So, Charles, you were nailing my butt to the wall again. <laughs> Let's get back to that. Well, I just... I just ask if you heard me say I'm just a yeah, dude yeah. who says that's a computer what's the first thing you would say to me if you heard me say I'm just anything I know you're special you're you're my special boy <laughs> <laughs> no you got to believe in yourself you can't put yourself down like that if you say you can or you say you can't you're right you know how you think of yourself uh, you're gonna live up to yes absolutely you're right. And that self-limiting belief is going to be the death of your dream because it's going to it's going to actually, you know, being comfortable will be the death of your dream, but it'll help. That self-limiting belief is what keeps you from going, I can do this. I'm supposed to do. And we had that talk a little while ago. So like, Hello. Sounds like you had a caller uh, coming in. No, no, but it's a something else. It's another okay. weird Skype noise. Gotcha. Uh, we had that talk a little while ago, and we were both talking about doing the motivational speaking. I'm like, well, do you believe that you could do this? And you're like, yes. Do you, could you see yourself doing it? Do you know that once you got into it, you would rock it? Do you really believe you can do this thing? And the answer that you said, yes, 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 yes. Then what is stopping you? So if you believe you can... That, that can give you the impetus to move forward. If you believe you can't, if you think, well, I'm just a this, then it's going to keep you from, from you know, uh, taking the next step, which is, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's just an excuse. Honestly, for me, it's just an excuse. Hey, we have another, it's like caller night. Woo, loving it. I got to answer it now. <laughs> Hello, three, three, four. Yeah, that's Is this Denny. Denny's, Denny's Dimples? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Where are you calling from, babe? Uh, Alabama. Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama. I'm sorry. Alabama. I've had a migraine for three days, so I look like crap. Here's the thing. You said you weren't feeling it. You had not been feeling it lately. How do you get back into feeling it when you've lost it? Well, you know what? When for we what talked about, did. Uh, we did a show called The Blahs earlier, and we talked about that. One of the things is you set your, you set your goal. You know, you set your beacon. And, uh, and then you have your, you know, it's just like setting up, uh, it's just like goal setting. You have your step to go to the next thing. And honestly, uh, it's just a feeling. You just work your way through it. For me, that's the way it works. I, I'm, I know that I'm in a, I'm in a, a, a mood or I know I'm in a, kind of just a rut, but I know I'll get through it. And th that's not the word I'm looking for, and I can't remember the word. But uh, for me, it's just to put your head down and move through it. Or 
find that thing that's going to excite you, you know, affirmations for me, because whenever I'm having doubts or anything like that, you know, doing affirmations on a regular basis, then that's the, that's the thought that's going to get into my head. And that is usually what helps me. It helped me get through my blahs. Now I'm through my blahs. Now I'm talking about, you know, uh, how bad do I want this? Really, how bad do I want this? I mean, this is nice. It's nice to have people calling in. It's nice to have people blah, 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 blah. You know, but how bad do I really want this? You know, what am I going to, what am I going to send away or what am I going to ignore so I can move forward with this? Yeah, but what if you get to when you are in such a rut that you really can't get out of it? I mean, you're just stuck. You feel what do you like want to do? Just stuck in what well, do you want to do? Well, it's not that. It's, I've heard, it's kind of like, um, I've, it's like I've had the same job since I was 15. Okay, so it's a family business and that sort of thing. And I'm pretty much stuck there. There's nowhere else really to go now since I'm part owner in the business with my brother. And it's not that I don't enjoy, I just don't enjoy it anymore. That's the thing. Right. And I don't, I don't, there's, I don't know. And that's now, do, you my, own a, that's my... do you own a business or do you own a job? A doctor owns a job. A lawyer owns a job. A Tortuga Twin owns a yeah. job. We have to show up. Nobody else can do it. Do you own a business that you have a system you can put? Like McDonald's is a business with a system. You have people no. working under you and, and they can bring it in. What is it? What's your no. business? Um, I own a print shop with my brother. Okay. That's a, that's a business that you can actually set a system in that you don't have to be there. At, well, you could if you if you could hire other people, but it, with the way that we are being a small family shop, it's just not right. not able to do it. That's the right, problem. But, uh, see what you're you're limiting yourself in that right now because yeah. honestly, yes, it is your bread and butter and it is bringing your money in, but it's not. You're not a lawyer. You're not a doctor. You're not an entertainer. Mm -hmm. You're not a singer. You don't have to show up for that job. So. Um, yes, you should pay your bills. Yes, you should take care of your family first. Always, always, always. So yes, you should keep your bread and butter job. But you can begin with a hobby that may grow into what? That may grow into. I'm sorry, something just flashed onto the screen and it's making me read. Uh, it's not me. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> right, right, right. Check that. Uh, uh, and it, it just totally derailed me. Um, but you can you can create a. a I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. I get what you're saying. Um, uh, <laughs> that, hey, Charles, that is how... I'll talk to her for a second while I deal with this. That is exactly how you get out of a rut. Right there, you just let life smack you right in the face. And you go, what? I, wasn't I saying something? You know, when it, come, when it comes to your family business, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So you have to find yeah. you have to find your joy and your entertainment and your release outside of the business, or you have to take a deep long look and figure out if you want to move on. If you want to move on, then you obviously got to make arrangements for your brother not to be stranded. But when I've had jobs that I've hated, I well I started podcasting and focusing my energy here, yeah. and it really has made it to where I don't. I'm not so miserable and so frustrated in any other job that I have. In fact, that's one of the conversations uh, Morton and I had uh, in the past couple of weeks was there were some situations coming up, and he asked me about where's the money coming from? Where do you see yourself? I was like, I don't care where the money comes from. My life is, is Bear Calling Nation. It's the podcast stuff. And that took a while yeah. to get there. So if you find that you're stuck in your job and you feel like you can't abandon it for family issues, for whatever issues, find things that take you out of that outside of it well yeah I have the what's bad is I work two jobs okay I work I have the, the print shop and then during baseball season I work for the baseball state the bit our uh, biscuit stadium in Montgomery so that seems to take me out of it and I just love that job but the, the where I make my money is at the print shop and where all my family is is at the print shop and I just feel I feel trapped there's really just nothing else that, that I don't know. I, I'm just in that situation where I just feel like I couldn't leave them to go do something else completely. Right. And so, that I just feel like I'm in a complete and total, like, rut. Like I said, I've had my same job since I was 15. So it's not like... Right. So you need to go rent two you know. movies, Fried Green Tomatoes and uh, what's that? Thelma and Louise. And there, there you go. That's your guide for life. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're driving off the cliff at the end of the movie. <laughs> you know what? That's what this. That's what this is going to feel like for you. This is, you know, you're. It's completely something different because, first of all, you've got yourself locked into this belief that you can't do anything, and you don't own a job. You do have a business where you could set up a business system where you could completely walk away, and your your brother could take over, or you could put somebody in place and say, "Hey, I'm going to take a hiatus." I'm not recommending doing that. I'm recommending you yeah. baby step it. Or so you can have maybe a little more time where you try something else, but you're going to want to develop something that is going to bring in your money. Otherwise, you're just going to want, what is your passion? What do you want to pursue? I have no earthly idea for the past two years. I've been kind of like, I got divorced two years ago, and so my, everything just seems like it's just going straight down like this. Okay, and if I'm, you could do, if you could do anything, just getting to here. if you could do anything and you knew you would not fail, you knew you'd be a huge success. You know, you have the looks, you have the money, you have the talent, you have the, you know, whatever it takes. Even if you want to be an astronaut, it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. If you could do anything, you're like, yes, that's what I've always wanted to do, what would it be? I'll go, and go back to school for nursing. Okay, boom, baby. I'm sorry, nursing is something that will bring in you money once you've made it. Right. So why don't you look into taking classes one at a time if you, can't do, if you don't have enough time for a, a whole class load? That's true. Well, we'll, we'll, I, I, that's true. I know. I, it's like, but I'm at the point. I need just a kick in the ass, and I don't know where to get that from. Okay. I, well, here's I, here's I'm your about, kick in the ass. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. So I'm about three you have, hours uh, east of you. I can be there shortly. You have two <laughs> weeks. You have, you have two weeks before. And Charles, you need to remind me of this because you know, I'll see too many shiny things. Rock, rock. Um, you have two weeks before <laughs> your the next the other side of live. I want you to at yeah. least. Find a school, you know, look at a curriculum, see what it'll take to at least begin classes. And if yeah. possible, go in and talk to a guidance counselor about this. Your dream is completely doable. It's not yeah. some pie in the sky thing that, you know, well, I'd never make any money at it or anything. And, you know, so I've got to stay with the print shop. You have something that may even bring in more money. If this is yeah. really what you're, you're passionate about, this is something you can transition into relatively easily easily so I want you to at least if you can get all the do all those things I said and talk to a guidance counselor uh, and potentially baby step in your way into this what, what he's saying yeah, that, that I can do what he's saying is if you I don't get do help here please get help somewhere <laughs> uh, have you have you talked yeah, remember, to remember this is not therapy just a voice. voice the other side of life not therapy just a voice <laughs> That's true. That's uh, true. Sometimes you just need somebody to talk to, though, about it. That's all. Oh yeah, but have you, <laughs> have you talked to your brother about this, about your feelings about yeah. the job? Uh, yeah, and the bad thing about it is he's a, he's a little bit feeling like I am as well. Like I said, my this is a, a business that my parents bought back when we were kids, you know, and it, my dad was a fireman, my mother was a nurse, and my dad retired from uh, from being a fireman and bought this print shop that he knew absolutely nothing about when he bought it. And right. so they, you know, they built it up. We have good clientele. Of course, the economy right now isn't, you know, not really great. So, and then just the way the life is. And my brother, they retired five years ago. My brother and I have it now. And so we enjoy it, but it's just right now we are both just feel like we're just so burnt out on it, but, and, but we don't want to disappoint our parents in uh, all this crap, too. I know, here I am, 45 years old, and I'm worried about what the hell my parents care. You know, I'm worried about what my parents think about what I'm going to do. Now, so, now, I mean, that's, it. that's not my biggest problem. I, will, I do want to ask you a leading question here. It has there been pressure from the parents to keep it up? This is your inheritance. We built this for you. Has there been anything... That is keeping Always. you there. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, that's exactly what it, the way it was, and the way it is still. Then they need to run, so, it, right? I mean, more. Do you disagree? But I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking for your life. It, it's was well, something that a wise man said to me today. Is I'm old enough now. When am I going to get my button gear? Yeah. <laughs> They're That's not they're problem. not putting food on your table. They're not keeping you happy. They're not the ones helping you sleep at night or keeping you up. You know? No. It's not easy. It is not easy. But at some point you mm -hmm. have to say me first. And honestly, as selfish as we are as human beings, that is the hardest thing to do is to say me first. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been that way. And so but anyway. I will definitely go look for the nursing classes. I'll start tomorrow. 
And, uh, right now, you have you have a lot of other options. Time. You have a lot of the options as far as your business goes. You can start bringing other managers in so that it's still in the family. You could sell the business and maybe take that money to do whatever else you wanted to do. Yeah. The question is, is how bad do you want it? You know, we're that, the theme of our show, how bad do you want it? Are you really, are you, are you willing, do you really love nursing? It is the thing that you want to do. It's not just a whim. Are you sure? Yeah, no, that was something I had always wanted to do, but life kind of got in the way, you know, you got married, started having kids. Life will always married. get in the way. It's up to you. There will never be enough time. There's never enough time to be a writer. There's never, if you want to write, you know, and be a writer, there will never be enough time. There's never enough time to get out there and uh, if you want to be a singer and, and be able to, to make your career that way. There's never enough not time for you to become a nurse. Never, ever, ever. You have to create that space. You have to move things off the desk that is your life and go, this is where my nursing goes. I'm moving this right. over here, I'm moving this over here, and this is where my passion goes. It is up to yeah. you. How bad do you want it? I guess that's just that's, that's definitely what I've got to decide is really how bad do I want it. I have to think about that. And and yep. that's what happened. You know, as executive producer of the show, I'm speaking in turn here <laughs> and saying, I will give you, I will give you extra incentive to do this. Okay. <laughs> you, when you graduate nursing school, Morning World Live will be live from your graduation. <laughs> oh my there God. There you go. <laughs> Can we at least, uh, we'll take a like, call. Two years from now, yeah. <laughs> so. Take the call. No, we're going to make a commitment. We will be there for you. Or at least I will. <laughs> I mean, go. just because Morna puts his name on it doesn't mean he really stays behind it. But I will be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. You're great. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got a, Thank you, Danny. I think this is a perfect time. This is a per perfect piece of audio. This one that we talked about earlier, uh, Morna, about... Uh, obviously, you amazing to others. This is perfect for now, I think. Right? Yep. Yeah. Right, Let's do go. that. Let's go ahead and and listen to that. All right. I hope it's loud enough. It's coming. I promise. You want to you want to intro it? Uh, it's called "Amazing You." Uh, obviously, you amazing to others by Derek Sievers, and it's supposed to be playing. Why is it not playing? <laughs> It's a live show, and we've got dead air. It's a live show, and we've got dead air. <laughs> right, so I'm going right. to hang up so I can listen to the rest. Okay. Thank you, Danny. All right, I got, I got to change one setting, and then we're going to get this played real quick. That would be maybe right. better. Once again, while, uh, while, while Charles is queuing this up, 813-413-7133. That was a great call. Thank you again, Denny S. Dimples, or Denny's Dimples. Thank you so much. And we invite other people to please call in and we'll talk about what we're talking about or what you want to talk about. 813-413-7133. Charles, are you ready? I am. It might be a little loud, so I'm going to adjust as we go. All right. Here it comes. like to hear it. Here it go. Sometime today. Any creator of anything knows this feeling. You experience someone else's innovative work. It's beautiful, brilliant, breathtaking. You're stunned. Their ideas are unexpected and surprising, but perfect. You think, I never would have thought about that. How do they even come up with that? It's genius. Afterwards, you think, my ideas are so obvious. I'll never be as inventive as that. I get this feeling often. Amazing books, music, movies, or even amazing conversations. I'm in awe at how the creator thinks like that. I'm humbled. But I continue to do my work, I tell my little tales, I share my point of view. Nothing spectacular, just my ordinary thoughts. So one day someone emailed me and said, I never would have thought about that. How did you even come up with that? It's genius. <laughs> of course I disagreed and I explained why it was nothing special. But afterwards I realized something surprisingly profound. Everybody's ideas seem obvious to them. I'll bet even John Coltrane or Richard Feynman felt that everything they were playing or saying was pretty obvious. So maybe what's obvious to me is amazing to someone else. Hit songwriters in interviews often admit that their most successful hit song was one they just thought was stupid and not even worth recording. We're clearly a bad judge of our own creations. We should just put it out and let the world decide. Are you holding back something that seems too obvious to share? 
And that is an outtake from the book Anything You Want by Derek Sievers. It's S-I-V-E-R-S. And I would have to say that would be the motto of the Bear Call Nation. Just put it out and let the world decide. I don't know how many times I've used something similar to that phrase with all you guys. Right. Now, what he does, he does little cartoons uh, with this at least. And that's, you know, as you're, as you're listening to it uh, and you're watching, I got to see the, the YouTube. Uh, you get to see the little drawings and cartoons that he does. And he does a number of those. This one, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to like it for my YouTube channel as one of my favorites. So if you go to youtube.com slash Mordant World and look in my favorites uh, after tonight, because I have to do it tonight, it will be there so you can find it. And I, I think I just subscribed to his channel and I asked him to be a friend. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, so that but, it, but that's very true. You know, there's a, a, I remember a couple of times, it's odd, a couple of times I went for auditions and both of the times, or these two that I'm thinking about, uh, I was like, ah, it's too far out there. Why should I even bother? You know, ah, okay, what the heck? I'll go ahead and just do it on a lark. I got both those roles. You know, the ones that I, that I was perfectly willing to blow off, those are the ones that I was successful in for whatever reason. You know, there'll be, uh, I'll do, especially in the beginning when we were doing the, the other side of live shows, you know, when, you know, shows one through seven. I'm like, ah, oh, this show sucks. I can't believe it. I wasn't that good. I didn't feel like, well, well. And then I'd listen to it and I'd go, this show was great. So you don't know how you appear to other people, how you sound. You don't know what's coming through, what you're creating. You know, same thing uh, when I'm on stage as the Tortuga Twins until we started, until we started actually videoing stuff. Um, yeah, it works both ways. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, overacting there. And it taught me to pull back some. But also, oh, wow, there's, there's a great moment that I need to, to highlight. And I didn't realize it, you know, or writing, you know, ah, this is crap. And then you read it again a few days later, and like, oh, it's brilliant. So there, there you go. And I, you know, that's, I don't know. I, I get so caught up in that, that sentiment. That's, that's the way I live. That's it's, it's God, man. I hate when people stop themselves short I've met so many people and talked to so many people that had so much potential to do all kind of things in their life, lives that I could see it. I guess part of my reason that I get so ill about it is is I take it personal because for so long I was told I can't that you can't. You're speaking to me. You can't. You can't. You can't. There's no way you could do that. Right. There's no way you could do this. To where I told myself that constantly, and so I could see the potential. It's taken years for me to even feel like I can do anything. To where. When somebody goes, man, that was awesome. Yeah, I know, because I've done it enough to know what I think is fun and awesome. Usually, it is fun and awesome to at least other some other people. Not you know overselling myself. I'm just saying, and, and it really kills me when somebody goes, oh well, I, I can't. I can never be a singer. Really? I watch American Idol, and you're better than like 90 percent of those people. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> more than you could. You could. It doesn't kill me when you do this because I think for you it's, it's universal timing. But you're talking about. Oh, speaking, public speaking. Sometimes I don't think you want to be a public speaker. Sometimes I think you want to get into public speaking to get past that fear of public speaking. Uh, I, I believe that with, with uh, public speaking, it's, it's the next stage for me. I believe that I'll be able to touch uh, a lot more people this way. Um, and and it's a, it's a type of performing. And, and when I'm doing it, like I... When I've touched on something that it feels like I'm public speaking, I just lost my caller. Curse says, 480, call us back. Um, when I touch on something that feels like public speaking, i.e. the Atlanta Mordant World meetup, when I was just beginning to work on my Level Up Your Life speech, and, I, and during that meetup, uh, a lot of that stuff that they were getting was, was stuff from the speech. You know, of course, I'm talking. It's more of a conversation. And I think that's the way I, more of the way I do things. But I, I really get off on that. You know, I really enjoy that. You know, my vlogs, when I'm starting to speak about something passionate and I can really, you know, I'm talking really fast and I should really slow down, but I'm enjoying that. I'm riding that energy. So I think I would really enjoy it. I think it'd be a gas in a good way, not like in the morning way. <laughs> uh, well, you know, Insert comedy here. <laughs> <laughs> somebody told me, it wasn't, it wasn't you. A lot of times when I say somebody told me, it's really it's you, but... Now, this was back from when I went through <laughs> I went through marriage counseling slash personal counseling for a year just to even learn to start to deal with my crap. 
but he a guy a wise man told me two things there and one was if you believe it in your head you'll talk it all day long but it'll conflict in your life if you believe it in your heart if you sit in it if you truly believe it you will live it and i think maybe even now for you the public speaking is in your head and it's not in your heart yet so if it is in your heart I think you would agree. You'd be speaking by now. I mean, for I've known you for part. Well, I've known you for a while, but we've worked together for two and a half years now. You yeah. know, or a year and a half, something like that. It's, it seems like forever sometimes. But uh, all right, now we got a couple of we got a couple of calls right now. Right. Alex, hold on, please. I'm gonna sure turn four eight zero four eight zero. Ooh, Alex is loud. Four eight zero. How are you? Hey, I'm good. This is Kathy Jen Carroll. Hey. And I've been listening. Hi, Casey. I see you. <laughs> so I'm watching, but I'm just kind of glancing every once in a while, but I'm catching the conversation. And I just wanted to say, I'm like, the last time we talked, you, I had some questions, but we're moving. I mean, I'm doing the triad mediums, the book, getting out there, doing gallery readings. It's a thrill just to keep moving, keep going. And this is my dream. So I'm kind of listening to you guys, and I'm just like, wow, this is really cool that you do this. And I'm just like, and it's so true what you're all saying, that you have to get up and you have to just go do it. Yeah. If you want that, you just go. So I just kind of wanted to let you know that I've, I've gotten the second part of the book almost done. I'm working with Maria and Melissa as the triad mediums kind of thing. Yep. We're just doing it. It's just getting out there and doing it. How are you so, dealing with with Maria having moved uh, to Mesa? She's moving in about a week, and I think it's going to be better because she's going to be closer to me. Oh, okay. So I, yeah, she's going to be a lot closer than Queen Creek. So, because I'm in Gilbert, Mesa, the border there. I'm at Country Club and Baseline, for those of right. you who know where that is. <laughs> right. So, well, yeah, I think it's... I was going to say, along with what you were saying, Nike uh, Nike had an advertisement that said, yesterday you said tomorrow. You know, and that's just that, uh, I love that quote. It's just like, it, and it hits. Come on now. How many tomorrows are you waiting for? Yesterday you said tomorrow. So. Exactly. Get on exactly. it. Exactly. Just do it. Move. Just do it. And that's the whole key. It's, it's how bad do you want it? You want it now? You do it now. You go for it. I mean, all the cliche commercials you want to use, you just go out there and do it. It's, that's all there is to it. So, kind of, um, can't wait till you guys get back to Arizona, too. <laughs> but, yeah. So, it's going good. It's going good. Everything is falling into place just like it should. Well, congratulations. I'm, I'm very, very happy for you. And I can't wait to see more of your book, your writing, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Well, the book is on, do you remember the page that Melissa created the other night on Facebook? Yes. Yeah, why don't you share that? Why don't you share that page? I put it on there, and I will, I'm going to send you, I'll send you the link uh, to your page, if you oh. want. But oh, you're I killing me, Smalls. No, I know it. I have it. I, I was hoping you were going to share it here. You're going to make me look it up. Oh, I, <laughs> I know. No, I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, no. <laughs> I wouldn't remember that. Is it, okay. Do you have to, okay. Yeah. No. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love dead air. Yeah. I can't find it. <laughs> yeah. I'll send it to you again. But I did put it on that uh, web page or the Facebook she created the other night. Excellent. Think, Excellent. Well, if you yeah. if you think about it, go ahead and put it into the the chatter box, and we'll get it up so that everybody can find it. Okay. Nice talking to you again. <laughs> great work. Great work. Thank you, Kathy. Ciao, ciao. Thanks. Um, bye. Alex, the movie guy. My hey, uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, I, I wanted to call it because, you know, we've been talking about how bad do you want it, how bad do you want it. It's amazing what getting pushed into a, in front of a camera can do to start you wait, off. Wait, wait, hang on. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to, to cut you off, but I have to address this right now. No, girls, you did not lose. I was very much uh, distracting and paying attention to what you were doing in the chatterbox. Um, thank you for calling me a pretty, pretty princess. All right, moving back <laughs> on. Moving right along. Back to you, Alex. Yeah. Um, you know, for two years, I, I, I sat there, 
you know, working in a job that uh, I hated and was saying, you know what would be fun to do is, is just do a podcast and start talking about movies. And then got, as the coolest birthday present ever, my own podcast microphone. And I thought, man, this is going to be really awesome. And then I lost my job. So for two years, I went looking for work and looking for work and looking for work, and this podcast mic sat there. And this past spring, uh, some jerk in tights pushed me in front of a, a video <laughs> camera. And, this guy and right here. <laughs> this, this guy right here and, and, and said, do this. And I got to tell you, man, you know, when my, when my sister of all people says, you should talk for a living. This is what you should do. People will listen to you. And that's a scary as hell concept, by the way, is to have people listening to you. Um, because when you do put it out there, you have no idea what's going to be, you know, how they're going to take it. Right. But um, for me, you know, just being able to sit there and, and you know, with the help of you and, and Charles and everybody, Hugh and Steve and everybody else uh, in the nation, Angie, of course, um, backing me up and saying, no, go for it. Do this. See, see what happens. Um, put I it am, out there and let the world decide. Yeah, yeah, and and so we've done that, and now it's awesome. Now it's awesome, and now I, I I'm, I'm I'm now more um, I'm the biggest my my own big critic, and I have a large big critic who sends me emails and go, wow, that <laughs> show was <clears throat> anyway, uh, and then I hear it and go, wow, you were really nice to me in that email about my show, <laughs> so. Um, well, I heard you did really good right out of the gate. Your first show uh, got quite a few downloads. I think you smoked most of us in the Bear Crawling Nation, or especially yeah. at least in the uh, for your first show, for your inaugural show. I, I was going to be really happy if ten people heard my show, and uh, Charles called me up and said, "Have you seen the numbers?" And I went, "No," <laughs> and he said, "I had 120 downloads." Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's quite a bit. <laughs> that's more than a few, yeah. So for me, that was uh, that was a big deal, and, and it was a real big motivator. And now once I can get over uh, uh, making sure that my editing is solid and everything like that, we're going to push forward, and we're going to keep doing this. And now, I'm why don't you go ahead, and, go ahead and pimp out your show right now so that people can find you. What is it called? How will they find you? Where can they oh, listen oh, to you? My, my little show? My little show is called Seventh Row Center. And you can find it as a part of the Bear Crawling Nation. With the number seven. With the number seven, yeah. It's seventh seventh row center. <laughs> what was that morning? How, how do you say that? Seventh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the th is silent. Um, so, yeah, we're Seventh Row Center, and you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Seventh Row Center. Um, you can hit us up from the Bear Crawling Nation. We are a proud member. So... And by we, I mean me, because I'm a fat guy. I call myself that twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you're awesome. And you talk about movies. Uh, what movies are, what topics are you t discussing this next one? You know, the, oh, the next one we're going to have fun with, because um, I am uh, a big opponent of 3D. I know so, you are. And I got to say, I disagree with you on some points on there. Excellent. Well, I would love to hear your in. thoughts on it. Um, and, and I went and saw... I went and saw Transformers 3, not in 3D, thinking, you know, it'll be fine because the movie guy, 7th Row Center, he said it, you know, I don't need it. And, I, you know, for that movie, I think it might have been tweaked even better if it had been 3D. Um, I think that that movie might have been better with good writing and plot. You know, oh, this sounds, this sounds oh. like a discussion for the show. Why don't you call it in and give your yeah. thoughts on 3D? Yeah, because I'm gonna. We're gonna a, be, this has just been a preview for the rest of you for Seventh Row Center. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, 3D and we're gonna talk about uh, fanboys. So that should be fun. Hey. So. so. All right, my friend. Anything else you got for us? I got another caller on the line. No, you get to your other caller. Uh, love the show uh, and glad to be a part of the nation. So thank you for making me a part of it. Thank you. And he's wrong about 3D. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh Vicky Swan. Yes. Welcome to the uh, almost said welcome to the Bear Crawling Nation. Welcome to the <laughs> other side of live. Hi. Um I I don't have um a question really. 
I just want to um, come in here and tell you that you are a really amazing person. You have helped me out of my life so much since I met you at the Renaissance Festival all those months ago. Uh, you have completely helped me do a 180 on my life. I went out um, last week and I got a job. I have my first day Monday. I'm getting into voice lessons to help with my singing. You have completely changed my life. You're an awesome person. I just wanted to give you a huge, huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you very, very much. I got to tell you, uh, again, not therapy, just a voice. You're the person who did all those things. I just maybe gave you a little direction or, or, or was an extra voice in your head saying, hey, why don't you do this? <laughs> I did hear you speaking in my head a few times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I'm, you know what? And it means a lot for me. Uh, for you to say that I really appreciate it because uh, just like the the audio that that Charles played for us there are times that that I think eh, you know eh, it's okay what I do but anybody could do this but so thank you very much I really appreciate that that uh, uh, you shared that with me and obviously I'm blushing and a little bit flustered <laughs> yeah when, when the fires were going on um, I'm on the star 21 by the way don't know if you saw that but when I tweet when I sent you that message saying that there were all those fires happening in my house. They actually got three blocks away from my house that were going on in Arizona. They got really close. And when you sent me that message saying that I could get through this because my best friend was evacuated, half of my friends were evacuated because of it, and you helped me realize that I could go through this and I could get through this. And I'm, oh my God, I'm starting to cry. Um, but you helped me get through that point in my life where I'm like, oh my God, am I going to lose my house? My friend's going to lose their houses. What is going on in my life? Because I'm actually looking at the mountain outside my window right now, and it's like, it's half burned. <laughs> um, and every time I look at that mountain, I think of that awesome time that you helped me get through, and I think of everything that you've helped me, done, helped me do, and you are an amazing person. I can't wait for you to get back to Arizona so I can come see you guys perform again, because I watch your video all the time, and it brings a smile to my face every single time. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And congratulations on moving forward with your singing lessons and moving forward with uh, this career you are creating for yourself. And honestly, you're creating for us as well because uh, that, that type of thing is something you share with the world. So thank you for not denying us you know, your, your potential greatness. Thank you so much for helping me out. You are an amazing person. You're welcome, Vicki. Anything else you got for me? Um, first off, um, well, my username does say Vicky. My real name is Alexandra. <laughs> okay. Uh, so just so you don't get confused there. And, um, also a few weeks ago you posted that thing about how cleaning your, your space out has helped you. Yeah. Before all this change in my life happened, I took your advice and I took, uh, two full weekends and completely cleaned out my room. And I'm feeling amazing. I have enrolled in honors classes in my school. I've gone into those honors classes. I am doing fantastic in my schoolwork. I am becoming such a better person. And even though I, you keep saying I did it, you're the person who gave me that huge shove out the door that I needed when I needed it most. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad to be uh, the person shoving you out the airplane. Ah! <laughs> Don't say that. I just had a nightmare flight coming back from Europe. Don't say that. Don't say that. Okay. Uh, I take it back. I take it back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Alexandra. Vicky? Alexandra. Alexandra. Thank you, Alexandra. I really appreciate uh, everything you've had to say. Thank you so much for everything you do. All right. You have a great night. Thank you for joining us on The Other Side of Live. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Four eight zero. Okay, just wanted to give you a quick shout out for my daughter because she's sitting right here where we were just listening to the last caller, and you have done amazing things for her too. She um, talked to you at the um, World Book Signing, and she was talking to you about wanting to be a police officer, and she has actually joined the Police Explorers. She's gone through the Phoenix Police Academy training through the summer. And she's also joined CAVIT, which is an after-school program for earn college credit through police training and stuff. So she just wanted me to tell you thank you and that a lot of this has come from you talking to her and just giving her the encouragement that she needed. You are very, very welcome. And thank you. Tell her thank you from me for, for pursuing her dream. 
because that I know it took a lot of courage to to move forward with this. Uh, she wasn't sure about it, and to be able to tell you, yes, this is what that what she wanted. Uh, so tell her I said thank you as well for believing in herself enough. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Hello. Yes, I'm still here. I think she hung up. No, I, yep, there they go. Yep, there they go. Okay, I think actually the, the daughter got on for a second. <laughs> well, we are nearing the end of our show. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling off on, on pulling the plug yet. I'm going to throw out one more time, 813-413-7133. If you want to call in for any last-minute conversation, this has been an excellent show, and I think we barely scratched the service, surface of how bad do you want it. I, I still would like a last minute conversation and hear how you react and how you've thought all day about your saying, I'm just a Tortuga twin. It hit home. You actually, you know, you, you, uh, you did a good, you did good. But he, but he, but he, but he, but he, but he, uh, you did great throwing that back in my face. You know, it, it shows that, uh, I'm in the trenches slogging it out with the rest of you, uh, moving forward with this uh, just as much as you are going through things just as much as you are so I'm in there too I'm you know human just like you and sure I've got you know I, I, I have the tools and the understanding to, to move forward and still it's difficult does that mean is that an excuse for you not to move forward hell no I'm hoping that what you're seeing is that you you know if I can do it you can do it because I'm just a Tortuga twin <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Russell, if you want to call back, I'm sorry I missed your call. If you want to call back, give us a call before we sign off tonight. Otherwise, we will be signing off relatively quickly. I want to thank everybody for who, everybody who called in tonight. You made the show uh, monumental for me and I know for Charles. And you got me off the hook a couple times, which I love. Thank you much. <laughs> thank you for joining us on the other side of live. Uh, is there anything I need to pimp out, Charles? Of course, the Bear Crawling Nation at thebearcrawlingnation.com. Oh, I'm sorry, at bearcrawlingnation.com. Bearcrawlingnation.com is where you can find all the shows, including 7th Row Center and Mordant World or The Other Side of Live, as well as my own weekly live show and many others. And Sunday is now the official drop day for the podcast. If you like to listen on the podcast or if you're wondering, if you came in in the last few minutes and you missed this recording, and you go, well, I, how can I get it? You can go to mornantworld.com and bearclawnation.com every Sunday evening. I usually do it in the afternoon. So every Sunday evening and get the show. That would be this. This show will go out this Sunday to let you know. And, of course, yeah, everything yeah. else for you is on iTunes and mornantworld.com and all that stuff. Also, there's one more thing that we forgot to talk about. Neil Desperandum. That's right. You are featured this, this week, aren't you? That's right. Neil Desperandum is a podcast where it has different people uh, reading short stories. So it's, it's almost like listening to a, an audio book. And I got to do one of them, my very first one. And <laughs> I hear it's about a half an hour long. And it took us, what, three hours of recording because I kept messing up. I have not listened to it all the way through. What's the name of the story? Do you remember? No, but I can look it up real quick. All right, you look it up. Uh, I will make it available or, or put the link on facebook.com slash mordantworld so you can see it there. But you can also, you know, just go to bearcrawlingnation.com and look for Neil Desperandum. Uh, uh, Charles, do you have Charles? Do you have that? Um, do you have that? No, the, the newest website? one is indie, indiestories.com is the website. Memories of Childhood. Would be Memories indie. of Childhood is the name of the uh, the story that I read. Right. Indie with uh, I N D I E N N as in Nancy D as in dog for Neil Desperandum. Oh. N D Stories dot com is where you well, find. Well, there you go. And you can't find the last one. Number fifteen is on the Bear Calling Nation website. I've just not gotten the newest one out. He dropped it uh, Sunday evening while I was doing everything else. So Sunday's drop day. So I have a lot of work to do on Sundays. But yes, you yeah. And Rockwell here. just put the link in. N as in Nancy, D as in dog, stories.com. And what number is mine again? 16. You are number 16. 16. So, the AC says for very, our Spanish Very fun, very beautiful. It's a, the whole idea behind it is fiction that 
really brings out the human condition or the human connections. And this marks the return of Jim, the narrator and host, to giving his thoughts afterwards. You should go back and re-listen because he sets it up ahead of time about the author and he tells you, you know, the author's done this, done that, and here's how you can find our Mordant Mon, blah, blah, blah. Then you read the story and he does all the music transitions and stuff. But then at the end, he basically tells you why he picked that story and gives his thoughts and, and ties it all together. And it's really cool. Well, there you go. I, I think this is a good note to end on. Thank you, everybody, again, for joining us here on The Other Side of Live. Thank you, Charles, my cohort, in bringing people into this path or down this path where we are not therapy, just a voice, you know, helping you, helping you on that road uh, so you can do what you need to do to go where you need to go. <laughs> there you go. And again, hello, China. <laughs> All ten of you who are listening to me. <laughs> and, and Blackberry, Blackberry, you are listed on the Blackberry Network. If you got a Blackberry phone or tablet, pull it up right now. Check out the podcast app, and you'll find the other side of the line. There you go. I think that's it. Thank you again, and we will see you in about two weeks or so. Ciao, deep dream catchers. The way you move, baby, no Hey, soul sisters, I